binary uh, file, the the provide the server provide uh, the MIME type will be uh, will be used in that case. So if if, comp if there is a conflict, if the server supplied content doesn't match uh, the the base content type, I mean, for example, for an HTML file, the the find mime from data function determines this file to be a binary file. There will be a mismatch, so the algorithm will keep trying uh, to to determine uh, the file type, the actual file type, by trying the extension of the of the file. And if there is no coincidence after uh, matching the extension with the with the extensions that uh, Internet Explorer has set in the in the Windows registry. Uh, uh, the content type will be defaulted to text. Um, I know it is a bit long, but uh, the point is that one of the key steps is perhaps uh, the the one in which the server provides supplies a content type, and the find me the find mine from data function is not able to determine the the real content type. So when there is no conflict, the 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 browser will be forced in in a way to render the content uh, as as it is the content type supplied by the server itself well now let's dig a deep uh, uh, a bit into some other features that internet explorer has uh, that have to do with the uh, with the attack itself but those are not so well documented some of them are known, uh, uh, are even documented in uh, a good uh, book that is uh, the browser security handbook that Michael Saleski wrote a long time ago. Um, well, let's start with the first of these uh, features. Um, Internet Explorer uh, has a way to, to track the user activity. Uh, and to, to keep their sessions and their history files uh, that is based uh, on storing the, those, th that information uh, in special files and folders located under the user profile folder. Uh, as some kind of uh, innocuous security measure, um, those files are randomly named. The, they don't follow a, a at least uh, uh, an easy to understand pattern, the names and, and the names of the files and the folders that Internet Explorer internally uses. And uh, although th those names and those, those names of the files and those folder names are uh, random, uh, there is a map, Internet Explorer builds some kind of, ma of map in a file called index that, and actually there are more than one, there are multiple index that uh, files uh, that are intended to track different things. Some are for the cookies, some are for the user navigation, uh, and so on. There are a lot. But these files, uh, besides storing the, the information that we have mentioned, uh, this information is not the only thing it, uh, that they store. They store also another type of in information. I, I think that it is for internal usage of Internet Explorer. But the, the thing is that the sensitive information is the, the only thing that in the file that it seems to be uh, stored in plain text. So uh, I think that's not a really good idea. And that's a key to access those key files, as, as we'll see later on. Well, another feature, in fact, this is a kind of group of features. Uh, Internet Explorer uh, behaves a m much like uh, Windows Explorer in many aspects. Uh, both of them share the, the Trident Layout Engine, that is the one in charge of rendering the, the objects once presented in the, in the main window. And both of them also support uh, UNC paths for accessing SMB resources. Uh, this way, um, Internet Explorer lets you uh, perform some kind of tricks uh, that 
Windows Explorer also does, as we can see here, for example. I don't know if it, it, it can be read uh, what is in the title. If not, I'll, I'll zoom it. For example, when using uh, Windows Explorer for accessing the history folder, uh, the, the, what is shown in there is not the actual content on the, the real content of the folder, but uh, some kind of schedule so the user can try to browse in the, it in that way. But if you try to access the same folder by using, by referring to your own computer using your, the UNC notation and accessing the SMB shared administrative resources, you will see what is actually in there. Uh, there is a, f a file and a folder, as can be seen there. As can be seen here, well, the, the full name is not shown here, but uh, Windows, uh, Internet Explorer allows uh, accessing it the same way. You can access files in that folder also. Um, well, uh, another feature that Internet Explorer uh, shares with Windows Explorer is that, that it can trigger SMB requests to any website on the whole Internet. So if you uh, include a tag like this one in a web page, uh, the user visiting that page uh, will automatically trigger a, uh, an SMB request uh, towards uh, that website. And as part of the challenge response negotiation corresponding to that SMB request, the user, the Windows Explorer will automatically try the first uh, to obtain this resource anonymously. And after it fails, it will automatically also uh, try to authenticate with the current user credentials. So the, the the remote server can learn from that request the, the Windows Explorer username, the domain name, the computer name, and it will have also the results of the challenge response negotiation that will have place. In the, that will have place. Um, that, and this also, also involves uh, another uh, security risk that is not used in, used in this attack, but an attacker could uh, try to crack the challenge response negotiation and try to access the remote, the victim's computer directly by SMB. Well, uh, another of the Internet Explorer features has to do with uh, how to classify a, a website or a, a URL to in, into as, as, it, as if it belongs to a given zone. Um, one of the rules that uh, can be read in the SDN documentation is that uh, a, a UNC address will be treated as belonging to the Internet Security Zone when the path uh, written in, in, the, in that UNC address contains the IP address of the target machine. And when the name, uh, if, if there is no an, an IP address but a name, this name, if doesn't have any dots, will be treated as belonging to the local internet zone, what makes sense because it is a, uh, the only way that a name cannot have dots is because it is a, a local internet uh, name. And if it has dots in, it, in, in the middle, it uh, will be treated as belonging to the internet zone, unless, of course, added to the restricted site zone or the trusted sites explicitly. But uh, when referring to your own computer, there is a, a kind of problem because uh, uh, referring to backslash, backslash your computer name uh, will make reference to the local internet in spite of this being actually your own computer. It will be treated as belonging to the local internet zone. And even more, uh, when referring to it through its IP address,